God, how can I know my purpose? Lord, what is your plan for my life? Lord, is this desire that's in my heart from you? You know, many of us have asked these and similar questions. And for me, this whole idea of purpose was something that I wrestled with for many years. By default, I became a chartered accountant. And I worked for big names like Deloitte, Disney, and Virgin. But all that time, deep inside, I was asking God, is this really my purpose? And as Christians, we know that at the macro level, big picture, we exist to bring God glory. But there's something inside of each of us that wants to know specifically, Lord, why did you make me? Why am I here? The Bible tells us that we were created on purpose, for a purpose. And we can only need to read in Ephesians 2 verse 10 in the New Living Translation, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. God made us on purpose for a purpose, but how can we know our purpose, God? You know, my own journey, my own personal journey, and certainly my experience with working with others is that we discover our purpose when we discover our passion. You discover your purpose when you discover your passion. That dream in your heart, that, that desire to do something that God has placed there before you were even born. You know, our passion is that which makes us feel fully alive. When is it that you feel fully alive? Our passion is when we get to use the things that we are best at, our talents, our skills, doing what we most love to do. Howard Thurman, author, theologian, educator, and civil rights leader said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive. And then go do that. Because what this world needs is people who have come alive. You know, passion brings meaning, it brings significance, and it adds value, not only to you, but more importantly, to the world around us. As Duncan said, we are each unique. We have our own unique identity. And God made us that way, with our own unique combination of skills, talents, strengths, personality, the experience we have, and all those things come together, and we give expression to that person, that unique person God made us to be when we live our passion. And when we give expression to that unique person we're made to be, we bring a unique contribution. Our purpose is our passion. Our purpose is our passion, and don't confuse that with a job. Your passion is not a job, because what happens when the job ends? Think of it this way, a car and its tires. The car never changes, but the tires can change. When you drive on tar roads, you no use normal road tires. If you're going into the snow, you put snow tires on. If you go in the sand, you put sand tires on, apparently. And when you go mudding, if you think, did you know there was such a thing, or rock crawling, you put a different set of tires on your car altogether. The car never changes. Your passion never changes. But the tires change. The job changes. The tires are merely an expression of your passion. They are the way that you outwork your passion. Think of a teacher. Is teaching their passion? I'd like to say that actually their passion may be something completely different. It may be wanting to see children fulfill their potential, okay? They can teach. They can teach in a school. They can start a venture helping children unlock their potential. They can help write the national curriculum to engage the hearts and minds of young children. They may even have a more altruistic approach to expressing their passion and start a feeding program in poor nations so that hungry children can eat and learn better. 
I had a, a gentleman come to see me the other day. He had a very successful international career. And he decided to come and settle in London to be with his family. And he was struggling with this, with where he was at and struggling to find work. And he came to see me and I said, listen, I am not going to help you find a job. I'm going to help you find your passion. And as we started working together, there came an aha moment in, his, in him where he said, this is the kind of stuff you tell a teenager. Why, no offense, he said, why hasn't anyone told me this before? Why hasn't anyone told me this before? He said, you know, I always knew what my passion is, but because of the expectations of others, I buried it. I pushed it down. God has placed a dream inside each and every one of our hearts. He has placed in each of us a desire to do something, something we care about most deeply, something we are passionate about. And I believe that each and every one of us, if we were to dig deep, we were to find it. But we allow our fears, we allow constraints perceived and real to stop us from even conceiving that maybe, just maybe, that's what we were born to do. We forget who our God is. We forget that he is the maker of the universe. That if he can take David, a mere shepherd boy, to being king over all Israel, what could he do with us? We're worried about money. Our God provides. We're worried about what others think. As Duncan said, we should care only what God thinks. We're worried about fulfilling the expectations of others. We will never please everyone. The best thing you can do is to please your Father in heaven. Many of us don't even begin because the road ahead is not clear. We see the gap between where we are, point A, and where we want to be, point Z, and we don't even start. But actually, God likes it that way. If we were to see the whole map, we'd be overwhelmed and we'd probably run a mile. I know I would have. But you know, the nice thing about God is that he always gives us the next step. You don't need point C when you're at point A. You need point B. And when you're at point B, you don't need step E. You need step C. And before long, before you know it, you will have closed the gap between where you are, where you once were, and where you want to be. If you love the Lord, if you love the Lord, if you are submitted to him, if you in prayer have bring, brought your desires to him, and if he has not given you a check in your spirit that this is not right, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Proverbs 16 verse 9 says, A man's heart plans his ways, but the Lord directs our steps. Many of us are just sitting around waiting for the writing on the wall. Your purpose is to. But there's always something we can do to take a step forward. You just need to get on the water, and as my husband says to me, start paddling. God will lead you. <laughs> Some practical tips, the four R's. Well, Wolfie always talks about the three R's. Alex told me it's now the five R's. Look, I'm going to go with Wolfie's original three R's and add a fourth R if that's okay. The first R, when you're seeking God's will, what is the reality? What are the circumstances you find yourself in? Is it time to move on? Are the doors closed? Are the doors open? What is the reality? The second thing is, what's the romance? What is your heart telling you? What is your heart telling you? What is the desire of your heart? Revelation, R for revelation. What is the Lord saying? A lot of us sit and we wait, as I said, for the writing on the wall. My theory is, if it's, if it's not a you no, know, why are you waiting? for a yes. If it's not a no, why are you waiting for a yes? The opposite of no is yes. Just give it a go. Give it a go. 
And the last R is resistance. Do not be fooled. When you step out and live your purpose, the devil will come against you. It will be hard. You're going to need discernment to know, is this God? Is this the devil? There will be resistance. It doesn't mean it's not from God. You find your purpose when you find your passion. Thank you.